Good morning, everyone. How are you today? All right. Good to be here in the house of God. I'd like to uh, have you uh, open up your calendars and your day planners. And let's take a look at the hectic schedule that we all have for this following week. Work, church, ball games, all the different things that we just go off and run around uh, doing from time to time. But, hey, it's worth it, right? It's absolutely worth doing all those things. But sometimes that pace can be downright crazy, trying to keep up with everything, keep up with the Joneses and all those kind of things. Uh, this is along the lines of uh, one thing to kind of keep in mind is we brought up in this culture of believing that we should be pursuing the right of life, liberty, and happiness. When in fact, we're all guilty of probably pursuing more of the success, the self-reliance, and the selfishness uh, that incorporates the, quote-unquote, the American way. Actually, it's not even American. It's the world's way. Uh, this has led to a lot of insulated people. People are just uh, so focused on themselves. They fail to even look around at the crowd, their families, in some cases, sadly enough. In fact, you can kind of take a look at our neighborhoods these days. When we were growing up, you know, we won't get into numbers here, but, you know, the big thing was big front porches. We would have swings, we would sit out front, have lemonade with our neighbors when we're on the way to the mailbox. Uh, unfortunately, that's, that's not how houses are built anymore. In fact, now we have big backyards, and all you guys, you know, we're proud of our backyards, right? We've got the big grill, we've got the swimming pool, possibly maybe a play set that honestly these days probably doesn't get played on that much because the kids are too busy with their DS's or iPhones and things like that. So, uh, but that all sounds great except for one problem. That backyard tends to be surrounded by an eight foot privacy fence. We're living an isolated life that's totally away from everybody and everything that uh, used to be an important community relationship building. Uh, the sooner that, you know, that we run, we go to our mailbox and instead of sitting there talking to our neighbor, we run back inside because, you know what, we might miss a Facebook post or something like that. So uh, let's, that's something that we need to address. But seriously, come, come to think about it, those fences kind of remind us of our lives. We, we talked a little bit, you know, when I opened up about our busy schedules and how those things kind of pile up and pile up and pile up. But, uh, that's all the stuff in our life, but what, I, what I'm looking at is that stuff leads to junk. That junk in, includes worry, fear, uh, just all those different uh, things, stress, pain, agony, just because, and, and it just keeps mounting and mounting. And, and unfortunately, we've gotten away from looking to the source of putting that burden on to something you know, away from us and try, instead of us trying to selfishly just try to power our way through things. Uh, we cannot overcome that at all by ourselves. Uh, that sin, those things, they, they eat away at us. They, they erode our families. Uh, just recently we've seen the movie Courageous released and one of the numbers that they throw out is there are 24 million kids right now living without fathers. You know, so that, again, we've seen the erosion of our family values, our culture, everything over the last few decades. God calls us to hand it all over to Him, not to hold anything to ourselves. But what I'd like to talk about today is three, we'll call them steps, or uh, three points uh, in which we surrender our lives and hand over these obstacles to our relationship with Him and to let go which is always the hardest part, letting go uh, to what the world calls important and getting back to where the values that we look at. Uh, turn with me to, to Matthew 11, uh, 28 through 30. And just to give you a little background while you're, uh, you're opening that up, uh, here Jesus is making the rounds in Galilee. Uh, he's still kind of new in his ministry, but he's starting to make a name for himself to the point that uh, John the Baptist, who was in jail, has sent out some of his followers to come check this guy out. You know, it, it's evidently, it's kind of like that uh, grunge band that's just started out, they're getting popular, and now they're starting to hear about it. So, uh, the, uh, 
So here we've got that being said, but then also in verse 27, really before the scripture that we're going to focus on today, Jesus really emphasizes to those around him, after he's confirmed his identity to John the Baptist's followers, the verse 27 talks about that he is the only way to know God, to have a relationship with God, and that's, that's kind of the foundation to where we build from from there. So if you'll look at verse 28 with me, we'll go through 30. Uh, Come to me, all you who are weary and burdened, and I will give you rest. Take my yoke upon you, and learn from me. For I am gentle and humble in heart, and you will find rest for your souls. For my yoke is easy, and my burden is light. Uh, pray with me, Will. God, thank you for the word that you've given us, the time that we have to spend with each other to focus on. Give me the ability to, to properly execute and to, to hand out the message that you have. In your name we pray. Amen. Amen. These three points, the first that we look at is, uh, is answering the call. Before we can do anything in Christ, we have to actually answer the call that he has. There in verse 28, the very first thing is come to me. It's an open invitation. And by no means is that isolated to individual people groups at all. In fact, it's kind of, it's open to everyone. He calls, and, and this is what's awesome right, about this invitation, is he's not focusing just on those that are talented, skilled, great business acumen, whatever, those great things. He's actually calling for the trash. He's calling for your burdens. He's calling for your troubles. Now, how many friends do you have that come and check you out when you're in trouble? Most of the time, they'll hang out with you all day long. They'll come, be with you during the good times, but it's when you're in the bad times, it's amazing how scarce that, well, actually nowadays, back porch could be. That's not how Jesus operates. He wants to bring those, take those nasty burdens from us, place them on His strong shoulders. Early in the book of Matthew, in chapter 6, verse 27, Matthew, uh, he, he says, Who of you by worrying can add a single hour to your life. In fact, I'll argue that the more that you keep upon yourself, you cut your lifespan. Mm -hmm. Modern medicine tells us that stress and all those things eat away at our health and everything along those lines, our relationships, which again, it just has a compounding uh, impact upon our lives. But unfortunately, in our hard-headed, hard-hearted way, we continue to just pound away, trying to think that we can do it better, that we can continue to make it without anybody else's help. Not just humans, but God. But that's where we, again, we have to let go of those self-absorbed attempts, let go of our pride, and humble ourselves, which is not cool. We don't, we don't, we don't really uh, raise up humble people too often. And, but that's what God calls for, and that's what Jesus asks us to do. 